Modern day bloodletting. So let's talk about how this uh, ancient medical practice applies to today. As you know, way back in the day, they didn't have very many medical therapeutics and one of the treatments they used for a variety of conditions was they'd actually obtain IV access and let off some blood. Um, today, basically, it's uh, donating blood is a form of this. And uh, as you know, this saves lives, um, but it actually has some health benefits. They use blood for a lot of things, but um, so, there, there is some research that shows that people who donate blood regularly have less heart attacks and strokes, which is kind of terrific. On top of that, when you do go, um, usually it's the American Red Cross, um, they actually do a bunch of screenings. They do a little bit of a health history and whatnot. Um, they, check your, they check your hemoglobin levels, and if they're low, that could point towards an anemia. If they're high, that's a polycythema. And those can indicate problems that you can look into further. Um, they also run a hepatitis panel. I think they check B, C, and they check for HIV. So you basically get a free screen on that. And they tell you your blood type. Uh, insurances usually never pay for blood types, and they're quite expensive. So that's a good way to get your blood type. They usually check your blood pressure, pulse, temperature as well. So you're kind of getting a free health screen on top of everything and can kind of point you in the right direction if there's any problems. Um, so on top of protecting against heart attacks and strokes, um, there, there's a condition called polycythema, that's basically when you have elevated red blood cells. Usually the hemoglobin should be between 12 to 15, it varies a little bit, but when you kind of get in that upper range, it's worth looking into a little further. There's, there's a few unusual serious conditions, they're usually with the higher hemoglobins, but it's worth taking a look at. Um, people that do run high, um, it's worth, uh, noting that a lot of these people we tell them to go donate blood or even sometimes you can order a therapeutic phlebotomy and these people feel a lot better they they have more energy and whatnot um they say the blood's thicker it's a little bit more complicated than that but um we do find subjectively that when they donate with the higher hemoglobins they usually feel better um it also helps your body get rid of some of these toxins that it can't that your kidney and liver your kidneys and liver can't break down uh, there's some things that kind of your body just isn't able to get rid of and they accumulate and they can cause all kinds of usually it's low-grade ruckus but um, we see a lot of like estrogen like molecules from the environment um, kind of accumulating and I've seen a few people where when they donate they kind of resets their system so uh, a lot of my smokers we get we try to get them to quit um, their hemoglobins tend to run a little bit on the high side um, sleep people with sleep apnea their hemoglobins run on the high side these are body the body's adaptations to kind of help get more oxygen around the body um, there's a couple serious conditions polycythema vera where I'm not gonna get in too much detail they usually run a lot higher and you have a lot of other systemic issues there's also hemochromatosis this is where there's a lot of iron overload and it can damage the liver and cause all kinds of other things um, just want you guys aware of it um, and uh, just kind of doing our due diligence to recommend you donate blood if you're able to. Uh, I think those are the big points. Let me see on my list here. I think we got most of it covered. Dr. John Sweetek from Sweetek Medical Center. Uh, like our Facebook page or check out our website for more information and videos. Thank you. Have a great day.